Hi all, today we are going to go over 4.1, um, which is exponential functions. So let's take a look. So right here we have some basic rules of exponential functions that we need to recall. Um, so when you have a function that has a base, which is our b here, to a power of x, that is considered an ex exponential function with a base b. Um, b is greater than or equal to 0, and b is not equal to 1. So we have these two rules we need to recall. If x is to the negative n, so it has a negative exponent, that means 1 is over x to the n. So it's basically like reciprocal rule, basically. And then x to the 0 equals 1, so x any value to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Um, just a reminder, the natural base e is a number that's defined as the value that 1 plus 1 over n to the n power. It approaches, as it, um, n gets larger and larger, n approaches infinity, and the approximate value of e to nine decimal places is 2.718218287. Um, this is an irrational number. E, e approximate is 2.72. It's called the natural. So what we're going to do here is think about the function um, at three hours, right? So that would be f of three. So we get 42.2 times 1.56 to the third. So if we do that, um, you can use your calculators for this kind of thing, right? Um, it's not something I expect you to be able to do uh, in your head. That would be a little excessive. And so when we do that, we get $160.21 when we round um, to the nearest penny. Oh, it says round to the nearest dollar, so that would be $160 when we round to the nearest dollar. So if we wanted to um, evaluate this function here, um, the exponential function f of x is equal to 1145e to the 0 0.0325 times x. Model gray wolf population of the western Great Lakes x years after 1978. Project the gray wolf population in the recovery area in 2017. So the first thing we have to do is take the difference between 2017 and 1978 because that lets us know um, what our x value is going to be in this case because it's since 1978. So we have 39 years here. So we're doing f of 39. So that's 1145e to the 0 0.0325 times 39 in the exponent. And so if we, uh, we're gonna round up, right? Because we can't have a portion of a wolf. So we're gonna round up here and we're gonna get 4,067. So just a review on the exponential function um, graph and characteristics uh, you can read through here we've covered this information before um, on a lower level right uh, on the cubic and square level but in general this is what we're looking here so let's go ahead and take a look 
So if we want to graph f, f of x equals 3 to the x, we set up a table of coordinates and then plot these points, connecting them with a smooth, continuous curve. And so this is a model of that example. So let's do an example together. So we want to sketch h of x equals 2 to the x minus 4. So if we do that, we can start by just picking some points. So if I do x here, I get negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Those are just easy values to start with. Um, and so then we can graph uh, 2x minus 4. We're just substituting into that formula, right? So we're doing 2 to the negative 2 minus 4 for that first one. So 2 to the power of negative 2 minus 4 will give us negative 3.75, right? And then you're just continuing that same process. So we get negative 3.5 negative 3, negative 2, and 0. So if I point, plot those points, I have the point 0, negative 3. I have the point 1, negative 2. I have the point 2, 0. And then I realize here that this is getting smaller right here. Um, and what you want to realize is that there's that asymptote in the exponential function. And normally it is at zero, but because we have shifted down minus four, it's going to be at minus four, right? So there is this asymptote right here at minus four that we're not going to cross. And so if we connect this, we know this is going to keep going this way towards that asymptote without touching it and continue that there. So then g of x works similarly, right? It's the same process here. So we can choose x values. I'm just going to choose the same ones. And then we can substitute into 5 to the negative x plus 2 here. And so if I did 5 to the negative of negative 2 plus 2 as my first function, Let's see what we would get here. We would get uh, 27. So that's a pretty big number. So let's just keep going and see what we, we start getting. Um, so if we do negative 1 in this case, we'll get 7. If we do 0, we get 3. If we do 1, we get... Um, Let's see, 2.2, .2. if we do uh, 2, we get 2.25, so if we take a look at what this looks like, um, it's clear here that the asymptote has moved up to the, where the 2 is. We can plot the few points that we can do here. So negative 1, 7, um, 0, 3, uh, 1, 2.2. 2. So that's about here. So we see we're getting close to that line again. So this one's going up and down towards that asymptote. So if we take a look at this next one here, um, we can use translations here instead. So if I think about what happens here um, to be able to do translations, first, let's choose those easy x's that we know how to work with already. So I'm going to choose negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And so the original function, which would be the parent function in this case, is 3 to the x. So if we think about that, we're just saying, okay, 3 to the negative 2. Well, we know how to handle that. We can put it in our calculator or we can just think about it logically. We know that negative means it drops to the bottom. It comes 3 squared. And so then if that's 3 squared, 
then that's one ninth, right? So we can continue that and we get one third, uh, one, three, um, and then nine. Okay, so then if we use translations there to help us, the translation that we're looking at is a reflection, right? So if it's negative three of x, then this is now the point negative one ninth. This is point negative one third. This is point negative one, negative three, and negative nine. So we can go ahead and draw that as well. So our asymptote here, because we didn't have a um, move upward or downwards, it's going to still be at zero. So then we can plot our points we do know. So I'm going to plot zero one, or I mean zero negative one. I'm going to plot uh, one three, negative three and two negative nine right and then we know though that curve is getting closer and closer to that asymptote right there right and then this last one here um if you needed to do e of x i'll just go ahead and give you the points that occur for e of x the beginning points um, so if we have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and we use e of x as our function here, we're going to have, um, let's see, let's do, let's do ones we know are going to be easy, right? If we do e to the negative 1, Let's just start with zero. We know e to zero is one, right? Because anything to zero is one. And then this is approximately 2.72, uh, right? And then if we did squared, then that's approximately 7.39. And so on. So those will be our original points. If we add one, we're just shifting everything up one, right? Um, so this point here, oh, if we add one there, that one is applied to the x. So we're shifting everything over um, to the left one. Right? So our x's are what's going to change here, not our y's. So our x's would then be uh, negative 1, 0, and uh, 1, right? So if I wanted to have my asymptote, it didn't move because I didn't go up or down, but I did shift to the left. So now my points are negative 1, 1, um, 0, 2 point. Uh, seven, right? So something like that, and then uh, one seven point three nine. So it's looking like this, and it's getting close to that asymptote without actually touching it. So graphing still follows the same kind of process that we've done before. So one of the ways that we can use this is in financial math. So the first way that we're going to look at is with compound interest. So this is the formula for compound interest. It's important to be familiar with vocabulary here. So A is the amount of money that's in the account after interest has occurred. P is the principal, so the amount that um, you're gaining interest on. As far as like the initial amount you put in the account or the initial amount of a loan. T is always in years, it's time in years, and then rate is always in its decimal form. So if you had like 7%, you're going to put 0 0.07. And then compounded periods um, have different words, like quarterly means four times a year, monthly 12 times a year, biannually twice a year, and so on. So let's look at a couple of examples. So suppose 3,000 is invested at 3% interest compounded monthly. So 3,000 is our principal here. 
3% interest is our rate, and we write that in decimal form, so it's 0 0.03. It's compounded monthly, so our N is 12. And we find the amount of money in the account after seven years, so our T is seven. So we just fill in our formula. A is 3,000 times one plus 0 0.03 over 12 to the 12 times seven. And since this is money, we can round to the nearest cent. So if we put this in, we get three thousand seven hundred and six cents. So on Jacob's sixth birthday, his grandparents sent him with thirty thousand dollars certificate of deposit that earns five percent interest compounded quarterly. If the CD mat matures on his sixteenth birthday, what amount will be available then? So our principal in this case is three thousand. Our rate is 0 0.05. It's compounded quarterly, so N is 4 and T is 16. Um, not quite, right? That T is not right, right? We're told they do this on his 6th birthday and it matures on his 16th birthday. So our T is actually 16 minus 6, so that's 10 years that that's going to be in the account. So pay close attention to little things like that. So we get A equals 3,000 times 1 plus 0 0.05 over 4 to the 4 times 10 in the exponent. So we can go ahead and replace that. Uh, let's see. So we're doing 5% interest. Compounded quarterly for 10 years this time. And so it will be $4,930.86 when he turns 16. And then you can also do continuous compound interest. Um, so let's take a look at this example. The difference between continuous compound interest and regular compound interest is continuous happens continuously, right? And so when we use that, we're going to use that Ehlers, uh, we're going to use that um, Elos, Lord Jesus, I can't think today. We're going to use E here, right? Um, so let's take a look. So suppose that 3,000 is invested in a 3% interest compounded continuously, find the amount of money in the account after seven years. So our principal is 3,000. Our interest rate is R equals 0 0.03. We're talking about T is seven years, but it's compounded continuously. So we're gonna use this formula here. So A equals 3,000 E to the 0 0.03 times seven. So if we do that, we get that A will be $3,701.03. All right, that concludes 4.1, and the next time we're together, we'll work on 4.2.